Here we're going to use heat capacities that are a function of temperature and heat to formation at 298 Kelvin to calculate the heat of reaction at 600 Kelvin. So the constants for the heat capacities are given here. The reaction that we're interested in is hydrazine reacting to nitrogen and to hydrogens. So the idea is we want to start with Hydrazine at 600 Kelvin reacted to nitrogen and hydrogen at 600 Kelvin. And the heat of reaction at 600 is what we're interested in calculating. The way we do the calculations is to take advantage of this idea of state functions, which means we'll first cool hydrazine down to 298K. So we have hydrazine 298 Kelvin. We'll then carry out reaction at 298. And we do that because there are tables available. So the heat of reaction at 298, we can take advantage of tables. So now we have nitrogen and hydrogen at 298 Kelvin. And we're going to heat that mixture back up to 600. So we essentially have three steps, three delta H's that we want to calculate. This delta H is integral from 298 to 600 of heat capacity of nitrogen, plus since we have two moles, two times heat capacity of hydrogen. And this delta H here is integral from 600, because the direction we're going is from 600 down to 298, of the heat capacity of hydrazine. And so if we calculate these three terms, one, two, and three, and add them together, we get the heat of reaction at 600 Kelvin. So let's look at just one of these terms. Let's look at this integral from 600 to 98 for hydrazine. And so that's going to be the integral A plus B. B times T plus C times T squared plus D times D cubed. When you integrate that, and that gives us A times T, B over 2, T squared, C over 3, T cubed, D over 4, T to the fourth. All of this evaluated between these two limits. So we can substitute in the values. We have the values here for hydrazine. A, B, C, and D, and the limits, and let, I'll just pause and write those numbers down so you can see what we're doing. So here's the equation where I substitute in the numbers. I have similar expression then, of course, one that we looked at up here for the products. And then the heat reaction at 298, I'm going to get from heat to formation in tables. So delta H reaction at 298 is going to be heat of formation of one of the products, plus since we have two hydrogens, heat of formation of the other product, minus the heat of formation of the reactant. Now this this becomes particularly easy because this is zero, this is zero. Heats of formation of elements are zero. And then we can look up in a table and we end up 95.35 kilojoules per mole. Well I should point out that the heat capacities are in joules per mole per Kelvin. So these two delta H's that I'm calculating heat capacity is going to be joules per mole. So I'm going to have to divide that by a thousand. So, so delta H then for reaction at 600 is going to be called this delta H here, delta H1. And then divide by a thousand to convert it to kilojoules. And delta H2, kilojoules. And then delta H3, again, divided by a thousand. And when I substitute in the numbers, and I use the spreadsheet, I'll show you in a second here, I get 88.7 kilojoules per mole for heat reaction. So you see the heat reaction changes, not dramatically, but it does change over 300 Kelvin from minus 95, minus 80 essentially. And let me just show you briefly the spreadsheet. So I put in the heat capacity. The delta heat capacity is just products times the stoichiometric coefficients, which are positive and you know, minus reactants, their stoichiometric coefficient. And integrating. So you can see here is the answer in joules for both delta H1 plus delta H3. And here is that integral, those two integrals in kilojoules. So in the spreadsheet, I use the idea of delta Cp, meaning heat capacity of nitrogen plus two times the heat capacity of hydrogen minus the heat capacity of hydrazine. And so this corresponds to when I integrate integral delta Cp from 298 to 600, I get those delta H1 plus 
delta H2 that I just calculated. Now in the spreadsheet, you'll notice in addition to this calculation at 600, I created the data table. And so this shows how heat capacity changes at over a temperature range.